Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here to do month six of the Quilters Patch Block of the Month. This book can be purchased online. I think your number one place might be ConnectingThreads.com because sometimes they have their books 30 to 50% off of suggested retail price. And But you can Google this book and you can purchase it at any of those locations and I can also link you to my first video where I talk about this so I'll link the playlist up above as well so for month six we're in the back of the book and we need to do the cone flower block which is on page 46 and the moon flower block and the moon flower block on page 52 so we're going to do the cone flower block first. So let me show you a picture of that. So this is our cone flower block. And we need to sew some strip sets and then make some two-tone leaves, which are here. So let's start with my fabrics that I've cut and what I've cut. So up here are all of my background fabrics that's described to you in the pattern and also in the pattern they tell you to make a template. If you bought the template kit that goes with this, then you can just use the template that came in your kit that you purchased. I opted not to purchase the kit, so I had to make my template. And I just chose to use two layers of freezer paper that I stacked on top. And then I cut out my A pieces from there. I cut a strip and then cut my pieces from the strip and then used that strip to what was left to cut my remaining pieces from. Now what I do want to note is that this looks like it could be part of the Trirex tool. And when I put that ruler on here, it's a little bit narrower. I'm hoping that this shows up in the camera. It's narrower as it goes further out, it gets wider. So this is not a Trirex tool, so do not try to use this ruler to cut out these pieces. You could opt to cut your pieces bigger and then trim them to size as well. Then I needed my stems, so I decided to use the same three fabrics for my stems. And then for the leaves, they want you to make half square triangles with a light and dark or medium and dark print. And so I have those here and I opted to use triangulations to make my half square triangles because they are an odd size and I just didn't feel like making them because we needed 12 of them. And I actually made extra so that I can make them scrappy. So I already have sewn these together. I just need to cut these apart. If you don't know what triangulations is, it's a CD that has various different sizes of half square triangles that you can print from your printer up to six inches. And they go, I think they go into at least one quarter inch sizes. I don't know if they go up to one eighth. I have to check. But that's what this is. And then for the actual flower, we needed strips cut. And you needed one of fabric one, you need two strips of fabric two, and then three strips of fabric three, and four strips of fabric four. So that's what I have here. I have already gone ahead and sewn these strip sets together. In one strip set, you need all four of the fabrics. You are supposed to offset them every strip, but I forgot, so I'm hoping that I have enough to cut the pieces that I need. I did not restitch. And then you'll have one strip that has your second through fourth fabrics. And then you'll have one strip that has your third and fourth fabrics. And then you will end up with one strip by itself that you just cut into these diamonds. So I have already cut this strip. So let me show you 
how I cut these strips. So we want to cut these at a 45 degree angle. So on my, I'm using my scrub ruler just because it's a small ruler. And I know that diagonally corner to corner is my 45 degree angle. So I'm just going to place that line on the bottom of my strip set. And remember that I'm left-handed, so this cutting may appear backwards to you, but it's right for me. And then you want to cut off that angle. Now I want to rotate my board around. And since that's farther back, I'm just going to go ahead and slide it down. And now I just want to cut the width strips as indicated by the pattern. So that's one. And I need three of these from each strip. That's two. And one more here. makes three and then the rest of this I can discard but I'll probably use it in a crumb quilt somewhere so that's my two strip set now I have one that's three pieces and again all of the cutting is the same but I'll just show you one more time And now we want to sew this unit together. So we take the first one, bring it to the side, and then the second one gets sewn right there. Third one gets sewn right here. And then the last one is sewn right there. So when you sew these together, when you flip them to sew right sides together, you should have a quarter of an inch that's extending off. So when I go to sew this together, I want to make sure that I have a little quarter inch tip hanging off. And then the same quarter inch should be hanging off at the bottom as well. So you want to sew one quarter of an inch. And then I will continue to do that throughout this entire piece. But it does look like it's a little confusing. But basically, if you just line up one edge when you're laying this out, you'll see how it gets sewn together. So I am going to go sew these units together, and I will come back with the next step. I have the partial coneflower unit sewn. I have all three of them sewn. And when I started sewing, I actually started with these smaller pieces first and then I worked my way to the opposite side and as I pressed I pressed toward the smaller strip set so when you look on the back you can see where I pressed this is my small strip set and then I pressed everything away from the large one it just made it easier for me and my seams look pretty good now the next step is to take my template A and I want to sew that to each side of my piece. And I have already done that step and this is how your unit will look. And I just press the seam toward the background piece. And then after that piece is sewn, again, you want to come back, flip another piece over, and sew one quarter of an inch to connect that piece. And you'll end up with a unit like this. Now the last step for this unit is that we need to square it to four and a half 
by five and a half. And if I'm checking my width, I'm just at four and a half. So I don't have to cut anything off my width. I just need to cut my length at five and a half. And so when I do that to all of my block units, you will have something that looks like that. So I will go ahead and square up my half square triangles and come back with all of my other coneflowers sewn. So I have all three of my coneflower blocks completed and I have started pressing my half square triangles and I just press them toward the dark because they don't meet up with anything other than a straight seam so it doesn't matter if they're pressed open and so I have one here and we're now going to take our F pieces and we are going to place them on the corners of the half square triangle and we're going to sew diagonally corner to corner now, in true practice, you should draw a line and sew on the line, but since these are so small, I'm just going to eyeball from corner to corner. So I have already done that for this one, and then I press the seam open, and then I cut the excess from the back. So this is the one from the back. And then I want to repeat that on the opposite corner, once I sew, I press the seam back to make sure it fits, and then I trim off the excess seam in the back. So I need to do that to at least 12 of these half square triangles. Remember, I made extra because I wanted it to be made with more than two fabrics. So I think I used 10 fabrics. So I will get this all done, and then we'll go to the next step. So I have my block laid out and there is no additional tricky piecing. It's just a matter of placing all of your pieces in the right spot. So I will sew this block together and I'll come back with the completed block. So I'm back with my completed block and I will now go ahead and start working on the moonflower block and then I will show you progress on that. I'm back and I'm now ready to work on the moonflower block. So this is the block that we're making here. I have already cut out all of my pieces. So here I am using more of a texture background because my first block was made with a texture background. So that way I'll have more than one included in the quilt top. And then over here I have my flowers which is like a Dresden petal. I did not check to see if this is the same size as a Dresden. But what I did was I made a template again on freezer paper. And then I cut a strip set. And then I just cut my piece out of the strip set by rotating back and forth. And then I have my green for my leaves and stems. And then the flower, the moon flower has a little curve that goes over the center of the wedge and so I cut that out so I will start with the first step which is to make the dressed in plate sections so I'm looking in the book now so I need to sew I have 15 of these total and I need to sew five of them together three times so I will do that and I will come back I have taken a Quilter's Choice white marking pencil and I have just drawn in a quarter inch seam line that I'm going to turn under. So I am going to do that step and at the same time while I'm doing that we also have some green pieces that go into the center. So I will go ahead and applique those pieces down as well. I will go so hand sew all of those down to the background and then in the interim I'm going to be making flying geese with these fabrics here 
and I will go ahead and sew those while I'm away too but your flying geese are basically where you sew right sides together put a square onto a rectangle sew diagonally through you flip that seam back and then you add a square on the opposite side and stitch diagonally through and then you'll end up with your goose unit when it's sewn and of course after after I press everything back, I will then cut the pieces from behind my fabric corner that I want to keep. I have my flying geese units completed, and I also have sewn my blocks. I did hand sew, and if you want, you can go and cut at least a quarter of an inch away on the inside if you want to remove this probably would make it easier if you are hand quilting your quilt but I am just going to machine quilt mine so I'm not going to worry about that now that you have all of your block sewn down either with fusible with or without buttonhole stitches up to you how you want to finish your block you are now going to square this block to four and a half inches and we want to keep this line straight with the back of the block so I just turn it over and lay my ruler right on the edge of the original block that I pieced and I just want to square that up but I don't want to take away any of my background so I just want to get off any extra pieces from my hand applique. I'm back because these should be squared up at four and one quarter instead of four and one half and I just misread the book. It's correct in the book but I wanted to make sure that I came back on camera and showed me squaring up at least one of them to the right size so is we need to sew our flying geese into pairs and then once they're sewn into pairs we need to make a square out of them by adding triangles on all four corners and so I add a green one that points the same direction as the flying geese. And then I use three backgrounds to go around the other edges. So I need to do that three times. So I'm going to go ahead and sew all of these units together. And then it will just be block layout time. <clears throat> I'm back with my units and I'm in the process of squaring them up. I want them to be three and three fourths inches square. Just making sure everything is lining up. That will also get rid of the dog ears on the block as well. So now I have all of my subunits sewn and now it's time to lay the block out. So now that we have all of our units sewn, it's just basic sewing at this point. I did have one extra C half square triangle left over from cutting. They had us cut 10. We needed 9. And I will come back with the finished block on my design wall. So here's my completed moonflower block. And... Just to reiterate, when I squared up my Dresden flowers at the top, you square up to four and one quarter inches, not four and one half. Otherwise, your block will be bigger at the top and it won't meet up with the bottom section.
So I am going to put all of my blocks on the design wall. At this point, we should have 12 blocks and I will let you see those in just a second. So here are all of my blocks on the wall. We should have 12 blocks now and my second block, which is the one that I made on the white fabric, I did tea dye it and it's still a little wet right now. I'm really happy with what's going on with the quilt blocks. This fabric looks a lot darker on camera than it does in person. I should have checked that before, but I did not. But overall, I am just going to leave everything as is. What I have is all going into the quilt some way. I haven't received any photos to add of any of my subscribers. So if you are working on this, please send me your photos to tquilts at tquilts.com. If you're not working on it or you're behind, just let me know in the comment section what block number you're at. I hope you're still working on the project. And until then, I'll see you next month with this block of the month. Bye-bye.